Hello everyone. Welcome to my home studio. My name is Alex Foster and today we're going to be exploring the wonderful world of Shibori, which is an ancient Japanese dye resist technique. Uh, Shibori means to ring, squeeze, or press, which is exactly what we will be doing today using our kit from Olin Hall Galleries. Thanks, Olin. So in this kit, you're gonna find everything you need to get started and get a little taste of what Shibori can do. Um, inside you will find some mercerized cotton. We have three squares. Mercerized means that it is ready to dye. If you want to try some shibori on your own clothes or in pieces of cloth, such as a scarf or a napkin, you can do that. Just make sure that you wash it really well so that all the dye can fully penetrate the cloth. Inside this kit, you will also find some string, rubber bands, some handy dandy gloves, and some writ dye. We've got yellow, blue, and red. Um, traditionally, shibori is used with natural dyes, such as indigo, but writ is a great option to kind of get your toes wet and get an understanding of shibori, and from there you can start to learn about natural dyes and other dyeing techniques. So, let's get started. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are going to start by sweating out our fabric and letting this soak for a few minutes. This will make sure that the binding and the resist that we create are super tight and will resist the dye once we dye it. After your fabric has soaked for a little bit, bring it out and then set the bowl aside. And we're going to start out with one piece of fabric. Make sure you get all the excess fab water out of there. In your kit, you're going to find some string as well as some rubber bands. And they pretty much are going to do everything you need to create resists and patterns on the cloth. They also act in very similar ways. Um, but you'll notice as you're using both of them that the string is a little more organic, a little softer. And then the rubber bands will give you a thicker, harsher line. So it, it'll be fun to kind of experiment and see what you prefer. So for all of these different patterns, you can use either string or rubber bands. So to start off, we're just going to just going to scrunch this fabric up kind of kind of folding it but making sure a lot of surface area is just oh my goodness my table is very dirty as you can see but that's okay it'll add to the effect of the dye So you can scrunch this up and then you're going to pull it really, really tight. And you can see all the little folds in there. And we're going to tie the string at one end, super tight. You can tie it in a bow or you can knot it. Just be careful when you are opening it up that you don't cut your fabric, which is a hazard in all shibori processes. 
I like to make sure that more folds are showing. And then he, from there, you're gonna tightly wind this string around the edge of the fabric all the way to the end. And you can experiment. You can really like keep your, keep your string really close together, almost for a coil. Or you can make it a little bit wider. I like to go back in sometimes and readjust the folds to make sure that maybe the inside pieces are now on the outside. But as you see and what you'll notice as you're as you're doing this is that where the string is is creating a resist on the cloth so it won't be touching the fabric and also inside the folds that don't see the the light you know those are going to be resisted too so the only parts that are getting dyed are the ones that are fully exposed to the light and what you can see and that's what creates the pattern on the cloth. Some people call shibori like Japanese tie-dye and it is, it is tying and dyeing quite often but there's a little bit more of a strategy to it and that's kind of the, that, that's it's totally the beauty of it. It's a practice. It's very meditative. You're going into it knowing what the, the end result will be, but you're still gonna be super duper surprised. And go all the way to the end. And then you can, I like to go all the way back and down the fabric. You can also mix and match in here too with different, um, you can do different patterns, different folds on the same piece of cloth, which kind of creates a fun effect. But the, like you have hundreds of options in this one little kit, which is really, really cool. And then you get back to the string that you start with and you just tie that off. And there's the first little piece and I'm gonna bring this water bowl back and you just throw this back in the bowl and let it soak and wait until it's time to dye. So for a little variation on the wrapping pattern, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing, but pinch the middle and then pull all the way down. So you have all of those folds but we're gonna start in the middle and then work our way out to the outside of the fabric. So it'll be more of a radial pattern instead of just linear. And from there, we're gonna tie this string really, really tight on the end, leaving a little tail. And then once again, winding it all the way down. You can, you can experiment if you want it to be more of like a coil with less dye, options for dye to touch, as you can see, or a little bit more space for more dye.
sometimes it's nice to take the end of this and tie it to something, stick it on a safety pin, put it on your pant leg, or like clamp it down on the edge of a table. That makes it a little bit easier. And it's really helpful when you're working with like a big, big piece of fabric. Maybe it's a t-shirt or a scarf, but you need a, need a little bit more of a um, tension to get a little bit more tightness in your coil. And just keep on working your way to the end here. All the way down. down to the very little end and then I go all the way back down to the beginning of the cloth. to the end. Ooh, those are some bad scissors. They are not my fabric scissors. I'm just use them for string and paper. Let me tie it off right there. Maybe tie a little bow. No, no, not enough string there. I'm just going to tie a double knot and hope that I don't cut this fabric when I open it up and then it goes back into the water bowl to wait for the dye. Similarly to what we just did with the radial patterns, kind of pinching the center out, you can also cr place linear objects inside of the fabric to create a resist. So this could be this could be like wooden laundry pins, or maybe you have like a pen or a pencil that won't get destroyed in the dye. Pencil's probably better, but you can place that inside the fabric. Oh, loud! And then tie off the top. So you have that nice little circle. So while thinking about resist, there will be a little circle in there. It looks like a little ghost. Um, and then the pleats of the fabric are a little bit more organized around the object. And you can tie that all the way up and down. So I'm going quick and dirty on this one. Got back to the top. Oh, this is a short piece of string. I'm just going to do a little bit more on here. And then tie it off. And you can use rubber bands here too. It's going to give you a different effect, you know, because the, the rubber bands are so thick and they're very harsh while string is a little bit more organic. Um, you can also be thinking about polka dots. So I'm going to do both, both of these effects on this because we've got some extra white space. So um, you can use marbles or beads or any kind of small circular objects, a coin would work well, lots of pennies, but you place that in the fabric and that will create kind of like a mold. Ugh, don't lose your marbles. Um, <laughs> that will create a little bit of a 
mold for the fabric to form around and then you're also creating a circle. So I'm using rubber bands here. You can always use the string instead, just like you can use rubber bands instead of the string for the other patterns as well. But we're going to get a big, nice, thick outline resist because of these rubber bands. By doing this, you kind of get these little polka dots, as you will see, and it's really nice to just cover like a whole t-shirt with them, or a whole scarf. You can create patterns out of them. You can also make little teeny tiny ones with string, and you don't even have to tie it off each one. You can just kind of do the string and then move on to the next one with the same piece of string. It's all about experimentation and having fun with it. And it's always a surprise. So that's really fun too. right there. And space them out a lot too. It's all up to you. And it's going to be really, really fun to experiment with the different colors of dye that we have. right there. So I'm going to put one there because I need to. Maybe I'll use some string for this one. Yeah. It's a little tight anyway. So kind of like I've got a tangle. I've got some tangles. Oh, I found the end. Gonna tie this around the marble and tie a little knot. 
we can compare. Ooh. Well, that's okay. It's off the edge, but we'll be able to compare the what the string looks like with the marbles on this one versus the rubber bands. So I'm going to cut that off. And then tie this off. Take any of y'all a long time to learn how to tie your shoes. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> so we have the clothes pin right here and all the little marbles down there. It's going back in the water. So for the next pattern, we're moving into our fan folds folding and clamping. So just like with the scrunching, kind of creating a lot of surface area that will touch, these patterns are all based on um, on like fan folds. So it's, it's like when you're folding a fan, you can do a hot dog or hamburger, but you want the pleats to kind of go along each edge. So there's not, if you were rolling it, then the fabric would be against itself and that would resist and then you wouldn't get a pattern. So we want as many, much of this edge as possible. And from there, so th this is like your basic fan fold and you can fan fold this way too. So it's fan folding down the edge so as much of the edges are exposed as possible. We got all those, all that in there, all this, and then it'll all pick up the die. So from here, I'm just, I'm going to get the string once again. We got more string and I'm going to tie it kind of like a present around the edge. I'm going to tie it more at the top because I don't want it to fold on itself. Give it another little tie and then wrap it around just like we did on the other one. I'm going to wrap it around this way and then I'm going to switch and start wrapping it around this way. And you can you can experiment with this. So the string could create resist, but also, ooh, I ran out of string. That's good, just in time. I'm gonna tie this off right here. As I was saying, the string will create a resist, but so will the folds against itself on the fabric create resist. So now you have this tiny little cute package. I love the shapes that Shibori creates. It's going back in the water to soak until it's time to die. This is a very simple fan folding pattern. So I'm just going to go all the way down. So we've got one long fan fold all the edges you want to make sure they're even so the edges are all equally exposed to the die 
and then you just go down and you tie some rubber bands all the way down the length of your fabric. So you might notice that it like folds over on itself when it does that. And I like to I like to kind of alternate the way that it folds. But you can do whatever you want. You can also use string on this. And it's it's a little bit of a more organized like coil pattern. And making sure all the edges are exposed. the end. So maybe I'll go from the other side. Ugh. Losing my fan a little bit. You can always go back in and fan it up again. That's what I really love about fabric is that it's so free. It's forgiving. It's gentle and forgiving. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you get some really non-forgiving fabric, especially on a sewing machine. all those folds down there. I'm going to try to space this one, this rubber band out a little bit. I'm going to treat it like the string. We'll see what it looks like. That's a little more spaced out, but these will be a little bit more like stripes. But remember, all of the fabric on the inside is going to be resisted, and it's going back in its little pot. Here we have a fan fold. Um, I'm going to be a little bit more strategic with it because you saw the um the square fold but you can also fold it like a triangle which is fun so we have the the long fan got the edges and then we're just going to go down the length of 
the fabric. Excuse my very dirty table. Um, gonna get some natural dirt tones on this fabric. I'm a sucker for the natural look. Oh, just like you're folding a flag. You're fan folding it, so make sure you got those edges out and exposed so it'll pick up on the dye. For this one, mm, it might be nice to use the rubber bands. Yeah, I've got three left, so I'm gonna use these rubber bands. I'm just gonna resist the edges, the corners here. I don't know if there's a, that one's gonna fit on the right angle, but we'll give it a try. Mm -mm, it doesn't want to stay. resist it all the way down the middle. But I do want to see what it looks like without the resist down the middle. Hmm. Here's this one. I'm thinking about taking off the middle resist. I might just do another one so we can see what it looks like, but it's going back in its pot to soak. I'm gonna do another triangle so that we can see what it looks like without the center resist. Just some experimentation. Hold it like a flag. Making sure those edges are very even where you're fan folding it. I'm pretty sure this is how you fold a flag. It's been a while. I did it in Girl Scouts. Okay. Then you get your rubber bands. These are my at home. You can also tie it off. Oh, let's do it with a string. Let's do it with a string. Might as well love the string. I'm I'm partial to the string. Can you tail? Maybe. You can just tie that. Tie it super tight. And then wrap it around a few times. And then cut it off. And, you know, you don't have to. To just wrap it around right here on the edge. You can wrap the whole thing if you want, but for the sake of comparison, we're just going to do it on the edges. see that piece there that I just lost for since 
if that isn't resisted, it'll just die solid. So I'm going to tie it down a little bit farther just to grab that spare piece of fabric. Yeah, and since I did not wrap it a few times, I'm going to do that again. Nice. Very bad scissors. But they got the job done, and that's all that matters. Tie it tight. So this is the little triangle without the center. And you can see all of the dye will be able to penetrate in between there. So that'll be fun. There it is. And it's going back in the dye vat, or the water bucket, until it's time for the dye vat. I'm gonna do another fold. Fan folding. Making sure that all of the folds are even, equally exposed. This one's a little long down here, so it's going to have a, a little extra. I'm going to make sure that's on the outside. And then we're going to stick to the square here. And the, this is um, this is the fold and clamp, which is very traditional. Obviously, there's no we don't have clamps in your in in the kit but um these are really easy to pick up just like some clamps you can get at ace hardware or lowe's um you can also use string so that's another option it's kind of similar to to this this little little guy here you can use string but what we're doing is we're placing this on the fabric to create a resist. These are mirrors. I got them at Joann's, but you can use, um, oh, hi, hello. <laughs> hi, guys. Um, yeah, they were very expensive at Joann's. But you can use anything that's hard and not going to melt in the dye vat um, to kind of create these resists. You can use, like, lids to cans, like canning lids would be good. Um, but then you just clamp this down and it's really quick and easy and the only place the dye is going to touch is the outer edge of the fabric. This is a cool, if the, fa if the fabric was bigger, you would also get this circle resist. So it looks kind of like moons, but since it's a little bit smaller, we're just going to have the inner inside. And again, if you don't have clamps at your disposal, you can just use string to tie it around um, and you won't get the effects and maybe I'll do that I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use the clamps I'm not going to use the clamps but if you have clamps you can use them I'm just going to tie this around to create a resist so it's it's a variation on this this guy but the outside and you're not going to have the the string as a resist on this. You're just going to have a clean edge. Oh no, oh no. Why was that difficult? Uh, there's nothing for it to hold on to. It's okay. Just keeping it really, really tight here. The circle does not want to stay with this string. If it was a square, like you could use tiles. Ugh, the circle doesn't want to stay. You could use tiles, that would be a little bit better. You can use, like, some, I've had like a, 
a metal or this is metal if you use a wooden um, roller or yardstick you can break that up and use that oh also like these like wooden clothes pins you can tie that on the outside of these fan folded fabrics oh that's loud like that and then tie that down I'm, I might do that because you get a nice resist there. Okay, here we go. So it's kind of like your your DIY clamps. But I'm gonna tie it on this side. And we're not gonna get the string pattern. Sometimes the string pattern's nice. Oh, you know what's even easier? I was gonna use string, I'm gonna use rubber bands. Thanks for sticking with me through this, this journey here. It's a lot easier. Just creating a really tight resist and then we're gonna do it on this side too. I might need to loosen it up on that side. So now all the all the dye can penetrate these edges, but it won't be where the resisted clothespins are. So here's two little variations on here, and they're going back in the water. Okay, I talked up the moon pattern, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do that. It's also very very simple. So. I'm gonna fold that down and fold it up. Kind of just double check to see. I will get enough of a circle on there. It's still a little bit over the edge, but that's okay. with like a really big piece of fabric which is fun so that stays in there really well and this is going to sandwich on the other side you can get these at Joann's if you want or you can go to a thrift shop and find something that's cheaper and more sustainable so food for thought I was in the crunch we always have to we have to go to Joann's sometimes okay so make sure that that's completely even. I think it is. And I'm using the clamps. Ah. It's got a good... Make sure that your clamps aren't touching your fabric because that will create a... Make sure your clamps aren't touching your fabric because that will create a resist as well. I keep losing it. And it's going into the bucket. Here we have all of the tied shibori pieces that are soaking in water so they will be ready to be dyed. And let's go take this party outside to get the dye vats mixed up and throw these babies in. Hey y'all. So we came outside for a little bit more ventilation since we're using RIT dyes. Um, I have three containers and we have three dyes. This is, there's a lot of dye in here, so you're going to get really vibrant colors and you can also use them for other pieces of fabric. So 
For your containers, you can use a plastic bucket or Tupperware. Um, you just need enough space for the, f the pieces to move freely. And we don't really need that much space because these are little guys. So that's good news. Also make sure that you're using a container that you're not going to use for cooking. You want it to be specifically for anything you're not going to consume out of, like a, I don't know, a yard bucket or a storage container. Um, yeah. Also make sure that you have your gloves and you have something to stir to make sure that the dye is fully dissolved. I'm sorry, it sounded like a squirrel was coming at me just now. It very well could. I found these little pencils and I'm going to use those as little stirs too. And uh, For your utensils, make sure that those aren't things that you're going to eat out of either. Uh, you can heat your water up on the stove, but I have a hot water heater here. And I'm just going to add the dye to each bucket and make sure that there's enough, enough water in there for everything to be fully dissolved. Right, we've got all three dye pots all mixed up, and now I'm going to distribute the little shibori pieces. You can do it however you like. I've got nine of these, so I'm just going to evenly place them in each one. Dump them in. The red is cooking. Look at all that. Since everything's really hot, I'm going to let it cool a little bit before we can stick our hands in there and open up some of the pleats. And here's the yellow. kind of see you want to open up the pleat so that it gets enough dye and you want it to soak for at least 30 minutes after it's had a little bit of time to cool especially for the folded ones I guess they're all folded but make sure that you stick your hands in there and open up all the pleats while it's underwater so that the dye will fully penetrate and you'll get a really even pattern on your pieces. Make sure on the other side you open it up that way too. Especially under the water. 
here's this guy, this little clanky guy. So you can see the white in there that hasn't fully been touched by the dye. And you want to open all these up and massage the fabric. Make sure that it's all fully. in contact with the dye. This guy doesn't really need to be massaged. He's pretty easy. some of the white inside. I'm just going to open up the corners. There's the blue. This is some electric blue. Oh yeah, this one has a little bit more space to it, so you can kind of pucker the fabric a little bit to get a little bit more dye on the inside. What else? Oh, there's not much to massage here for the little square. Ooh. Hot. Dig it there. Ooh, this lost its, this lost a rubber band, which happens sometimes. It's still gonna get some resist. So I'm going to just stick it back in there without much massage. And I'm gonna let it soak. I think I'm gonna let it soak overnight. You can let it soak 30 minutes up to overnight. It's whatever you want. Um, once they have sat in the dye long enough and they've been fully massaged and soaked through, um, rinse your fabric while it's still bound in its little packages. I will be back with you to do that. So, thanks y'all. I hope you're having fun. Alrighty. So everything's been dyed and while it was all bound I went ahead and washed everything. Um, separately. So I washed all the reds with all the reds, all the blues with all the blues, and all the yellows with all the yellows, and I kind of stuck it in a bucket to let it rinse out. But everything's been dyed, and now it's the fun part. We're going to open everything back up. So I'm going to try to open it in the order that we bound everything. So this is that first one. And it's going to be really helpful to have a seam ripper, but if you don't have a seam ripper, just be really careful with the scissors. Go in there and get just the string. And then unwind it. Sometimes it's fun to save the rope. You can use it for embroidery and stuff. Ooh. Now we open it all up. So here is the vertical, the stretch, and the coil. It's really nice. I'm going to set it over there. And the next one was the radial stretch and coil. I dyed this in the yellow. Let's 
remember this was pinched in the middle and then coiled around. So it has a little bit more, and there's a lot of white in here, but it reminds me of like a flower or sunshine. Very nice. Here's the radial with the resist. So we got the clothes pin. Woo! Oh, that's still stuck there. And then all of the little marbles. Let's take a while. Save the rubber bands. You never know when you'll need a rubber band. So now you can kind of see a little bit of those. They're really nice. I love this yellow. It's very spring-ish. Major daffodil vibes. Shibori is cool because you kind of start to get an idea of how all of these patterns are created and then you'll start recognizing them around whether you're like in TJ Maxx or like on vacation people love to put these on sarongs and things the secret to the pattern Oh, this is the string one. Let's see how it really compares. It might be exactly the same. very similar. Now you know. Just a reminder, you don't need marbles. You can do this with pennies. You can do this with nuts and bolts and screws. You can 
screws like that clothes pin to kind of get the, the tied coil look. So any kind of circular object. And that was it for this one, which turned out really nice. Ooh, yes, yes. Sunshine and daffodils. Um, from there, we're moving into the fan fold. So this is the straight fan fold. Ooh. Vertical fan fold with rubber bands. Major indigo vibes with this blue. Christmas with Shibori. Every day is Christmas. Or your birthday. This was the one that. Ooh, sheesh. Yeah, it kind of varied the, the rubber band down there. And you can do you can do the string instead of rubber bands. I put down some plastic to protect the table in case there is any leftover dye on this fabric. You can put down newspaper too. Ooh, yes. This is the fan fold. You get kind of these stripes. And just for comparison, this is the one that was straight. Like you pulled it very tight and wrapped it and coiled it. So you have a you can kind of see how this is a, the red is a little more organic and then the blue gives you more stripes but they're both really really fun it's all up to your preference um from there we've got like this little we got the squares so here's that square that was fan folded and then fan folded the other way and just wrapped really tight. Let's see how this turned out. It is a little easier to unwrap with the string. Not too much variation of the, from the string on this, so maybe rubber bands are better for the future. It's all up to you. Ooh, what else? Square, squares and squares. It's really nice. And then we have the triangles. Oh yeah, this is the square. Okay, I'm just I'm just jumping all over the place, y'all. This is the square with a clamp on it. It's our little homemade clothespin clamp. So you can see where the, the clothespin was there, and then the die was able to touch everywhere that the clothespin wasn't. Yeah. Yes, yes. That turned out nice. A little comparison once again. This is just the square, and then this is with the closed pin resist. Oh yeah, and then the clamps with the circle resist. So you, once again, you can use canning jars. You can use any kind of jar. 
But this gives you the circle, which is great. Love the circle. Very fun. And then triangles are left. So the fan folded triangles. That was with the rubber bands. One of the rubber bands fell off, so that might leave some interesting variation here. Ooh. Yeah. Very nice. Very exciting. And then this was with the tied corners on the red. Oh, I'm gonna grab my seam ripper. Very, very careful. get a little radial pattern here. You lose the triangle on this. Let's see how to open this up. Interesting. Interesting. It's all it's a surprise. You wouldn't even know that was a triangle. Very cool. So we had some nice nice turnout. And then you can go back in and do it again. I have a ton of dye left. So I'm gonna pick a few of these, especially the ones with extra white space like this one. And I'm gonna do it again and just see how the dye mixes and what ends up happening. But we had really, really nice turnouts. And if you love what you did, keep it. If you want it to be a little different, you can tie it up, do it again, dye it with another color. I'm gonna tie, I'm gonna tie it up and do it again, and then we can see what happens. It's very, this is the best part, it's so fun. Yeah, nice work, y'all. I laid them all out for a little photo opportunity, but just a reminder that after you've opened them all up, Make sure to take the ones that are the same color and give them another rinse just to get all excess dye out. And dye, rinse them out a little separately so the dye doesn't mix. So I've got all the yellows, all the reds, and all the blues together. And then I'm gonna pick the ones that, that I want to experiment with a little bit more and tie those up using any of those variations.
So these have all been tied and they're back in the bucket of water to soak out. I'm going, I, I saved all of the dyes, so I have three different pots. And I'm just going to stick them back on the stove to heat up real quick. Once again, you don't want to use a container that you're going to use for food. These are all my dye pots. So I, I think that the dye is so concentrated that you could definitely just heat up more water and then dump it on top to heat the bath again just a little bit. And I'm going to throw each of these back in. So stay tuned, y'all. Welcome to my stove top. These have, are heating up right now. The blue's already all heated. And once again, if you don't have a container that can go on the stove, feel free to use a hot water heater and just dump another pot on top to bring it back up to temperature. I think there's enough concentration in this writ dye that it's not going to affect the color that much. And then I'm going to go ahead and just stick these back in. You can do whatever colors you want um, with what color. Obviously, listen to your heart. I'm going to experiment with making the greens and the purples. Ooh. So I'm going to put the blues in the red and the yellow. I really want this, this one to go in the red because I think it's going to look like a sunshine. And that means that this one will go in the blue. So they are all distributed and I'm just going to give each one a little stir with my handy dandy pencil. Let's see. It already looks a little purple. I'm excited to see how these mix. And I'm going to let these sit for at least 30 minutes. I think I'm, I'm going to let them sit for probably an hour or two. And if it isn't quite hot enough, just remember that the longer it sits in the dye, the more vibrant it will be. So for where heat doesn't, doesn't make that big of a difference, time will. You can always trade the heat for the time with dyeing, any kind of dyeing. Alrighty, and now they're going to sit. I've rinsed the pieces that were over dyed after they soaked for a little bit in the dye pot. I rinsed them out while they're still wrapped in Tide. And now let's open them up.
here are all the results. Thanks so much, y'all, for joining me on this kit through Olin Galleries. Yeah, feel free to just keep on shaboring as much fabric as you want. You can dye it another th like three more times with different colors. We did get some cool results doing the two, or you can stop at one if you love it. Don't stop. Just keep it there and figure out what to do with the fabric. I think I'm going to sew these onto a string to have a little banner. But you can quilt them. You can use them as patches on your clothes. There's so much you can do with these fabrics and I'm really excited to see what y'all decide to do. So as you're using the kits, please send me your results. Feel free to send them to me on Instagram at Foster Fiber, or you can email me at alexfosterfiber at gmail.com. Um, and don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions too. Yeah, I'm so excited to see what you make, and I hope that y'all enjoy Shibori and have as much fun as I did. Yeah, have a wonderful rest of your day, week, weekend. And I look forward to seeing what y'all do. So take care out there, stay safe, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye, y'all. <laughs>